welcome back to my video I made a video a few minutes ago on how to add the beads the simple version beads and I realized that I've already sewn up the section here and if you are not interested in adding the beads then you'd probably want to know how to sew up the little alien from the start so what I'm going to do is, this is going to be a bit weird, but I'm going to start this one. I'm going to sew them up until there, but not any further because I obviously want to add the beads. And um, I will then continue with this guy and he will be sewn all the way up. We will stuff him, close his neck and put in the little line for the legs as well as the little arm placements this one doesn't have the beads and then I discovered the bead and the bell which I think are really cute I'm gonna make it into two parts so the first part is literally gonna be sewing him all the way up um, and then stuffing him and then the next part will be on how to do the neck and the beads. So it'll be in two sections. Because not everybody is one gonna is going to want to make him make his little collar like that. And um, they won't want to add beads. So that that'll be the second video. Sorry for repeating myself so many times. So where do we start? What we need is we need our alien, obviously, he's been knitted. And this is how he came off the knitting needles. The last four stitches, which I ran the darning needle through. His eyes have been glued into place. So that's important just to have, if you're gonna add in the glue, if you're gonna add in your eyes, they need to be done. And then obviously, if you're gonna be adding beads, those also need to be done. I'm going to zoom in. I've changed my camera angle. It's directly on top of me instead of to the side. So I'm hoping you'll see less of my hands this way. And because one hand was kept getting in the way. I have two little rings, got them from eBay, and they are closed rings. They're not open because the open ones will come off. This is going to be a pendant. These little aliens are pendants. If you don't want to have a pendant, then you just don't put the little rings in. And of course, you would change the eyes if you wanted to be for, for a baby. You wouldn't put in something that can come out, even though these are glued in. To start off with, I'm just going to go back into the four stitches which were at the top and turn him over and I'm going to sew the back of the antenna closed I'm trying my best to catch the very edge of the of the antenna if you can hear the wind outside that is storm Eunice working her way across the UK today I'm literally sitting next to a slightly open window decide how far you, down you want to go at some point you need to go back up here and add the rings so I'll just do one more if you're not going to add the rings you just continue if I am going to add the rings I'm going to go back all the way up come out somewhere on the side pick up the rings with my darning needle go back in the other side 
pull it in. It's as simple as that. And I will be doing that three to four times. Two, three. I could have used one ring, but I just used two. Just makes it that much more secure. There we go. Let's go back on myself at least once. Not into the same spot though. Let me turn it over. Move my hands a little bit more. Doop, doop, doop. Turn it back to the back and just pull down the inside and come out where I had left off. Oops, that can happen. If you do, if you go a little bit past the edge, it's fine. Just come back in, catching two, two loops and then one. I will not be stuffing the antenna so it doesn't matter if by accident I'm catching a thread or two from the front of the work now I'm getting to the point where it's fla flaring out and I will want the stuffing to go quite high there so now I have to be careful I roll it open as I said those edge loops when I knitted it I did not slip the first stitch pull the last I knitted every stitch on the knit side I pulled every stitch on the pull side it's stocking stitch and I worked under tension and I tugged the yarn a lot so that I would not have gaping side stitches I use a 2.25 millimeter, two and a quarter millimeter on a fairly thinnish DK. Some DKs are thicker. Um, so I'm putting the white one aside. Purple's nicer. And we want to finish this chap because we started him earlier. And also, as I said, I want to put some beads on the white one. So picking up where I left off, I tend to work in series, so I will do, I will bead a couple, well a few, not just a couple, not just a couple, which is two, I'll bead a number of them and then I will sew up a number of them and stuff them. <clears throat> Last night I was having a wonderful time and I finished five of them. I did glued the eyes in the morning and then in the evening I started at half past six and by half past two in the morning I had several cups of tea still hadn't had my dinner and um, I was just working away it was lovely So as you can see, I just keep on rolling it open. What are my hands doing? Keep on rolling it open. It hasn't been blocked or washed or anything. They literally, this is literally how it came off the needles. A 
getting a little bit up the disc. I'm going too far down the disc. So there's a new camera angle, so I'm just going to be used to looking at the screen at this angle. There are many ways of sewing something up. What have I done there? That's okay. I just press I just prefer this one. It also mas matches the, the way that I knit. We all knit differently. Some people do have different ways they do their edge. Some people prefer to stitch something up from the inside and create a seam. Slightly bulky seam. Um, I really started doing this when I was doing baby wear for the hospitals. And they wanted something that didn't have a seam. So if you look from the inside, you will see that it has almost no seam. Because every little bump can hurt the tiny babies in the incubators. We avoid every bump because you imagine if you're lying on that for hours and hours if it's a little hut or a little jumper or something. So now I'm coming to the green. This is always a section that is creeped up. I don't know how that happens. So what I'm going to do is go a little bit further in which means instead of just catching the first one, I'm going to take the second one as well. Then I'm going to come fetch this first one here and I'm going to push down the green, go over to the other side. So that I can completely align those two rows of green. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to ignore the complete edge because there's also a purple there that's sneaking up. So I'm going to go in there and in there. You can even go right across the two if you want to. Come and fetch two. I won't take the first one. I'll just go back to the second one there. Doesn't matter if there's a bit of a bump. It's not for a baby. I mean, the baby's not lying on it, so... When you're stuffing a toy, you can hide all kinds of evils inside. And now I'm just going back to where I was. I'm going to go a little bit further. And then I'm going to do the green. I'll show you what I'll do there. If you want to, you can actually do the green before you even arrive at the stripes. So when I knitted it, I tied my two green threads off with a knot. I'll leave the knot in place. And what I'm going to do is, here are my two threads. So this is these ones are both half an arm length. I have since updated it and now I do an arm's length for one of them. So that I can knit the little collar. So it's always a work in progress, it's always updates. But sometimes these little bodies, because I have a big basket of bodies next to me, and sometimes an earlier version is in there. So what I'm doing is I'm literally just pushing it through. As I said, you can do this before you get there if you want. Just pushing it through where the knot is. Not right next to the knot, it doesn't really matter. Taking him through. Am I caught in anything? No. Take him off, take the other one through on the other side of the seam. So either you can go all the way down to the foot, if you have long fingers it'll work to be able to get into there and then you will weave it around. Because I've gone, gone past, I'm going to do it now. What I need to do is 
I need to weave. And you can see here, this is the original version. I would use a separate piece of yarn, different color. You can use the same color if you want to, if you really want the neck to be invisible. Let me zoom out a little bit. Whoops. If you want the neck to be invisible, you'll use the same color yarn and you will weave it all the way across. You see how the weaving has been done? So this little body was one of my earlier versions. When I say earlier, as in two weeks ago, 10 days ago, approximately. I have since updated it and now I knit the neck in. Some, some of them I knitted one row, some of them I knitted two. I'm very happy with the two row knit. So yes, I'm always tweaking the pattern to try and find the best version. What I'm going to do is I'm going to weave it in like that. But I'm going to go in opposite directions. And one row will be going over. And the next row, so if this one goes over like that. The next row will go under. And you can see how it pushes it up go over, under, and over. So you see what will happen when I make two contrasting rows. It's literally going to be catching. Two, two threads will be literally catching everything, every single one. Because I'm working green on green, it's not going to be obvious. And then my latest version, because now that's why I make an arm's length for one of the tails, I literally crochet a little collar and fasten that in place just to hide the weaving in and out underneath. So let's get started with this. Doesn't really matter which direction I go. For this one, I'll go back. I'll go on the bottom one, catching two, skipping two, catching two, skipping two, catching two. And that is how I will go all the way around. Some people, when they make comfort dolls, they add the features on the face last. If they're going to sew the features in with yarn, if it's for a tiny baby or they don't know who, where, what the destination is and they want it to be a safe, safety first uh, comfort doll. But this is probably a good opportunity for you to sew the features in because you've got your finger in there and... Um, you know where the placement will be of the face so you got you got you got different options of uh, exactly when you will sew your face in you can also sew it in when it's still flat but um these ones they don't have little mouths they just have these big bulging eyes so as you can see this one came from that direction and it was at the bottom this one is going to be at the top because I have that knot in the back, I'm not worried by pulling it that I'm going to be distorting my knitting. So now I need to make sure that I, when I start, I know where I'm... Whoops, sorry about that. I need to be sure that I am not doing the same. It needs to be the opposite.
So if this one is underneath, on this one it must be over. This one's over, so this one must be underneath. And it's just two, 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 all the way around. I had pulled the other one. It wasn't necessary to do that, but I had. What it has done, it has actually put the work in relief, a little bit 3D. And it is helping. Because I can immediately see which is the top and which is the bottom. So yeah, this is how I do the next um, If you're making a face, if you're making a, a comfort doll, it's a little guy, and you have your face and you have your shirt, you don't have a collar or a neck band like this, you can always use the tail from each color. Just cut your tail long enough so that you have one tail from the face and you have one tail from the shirt, and you can you can do this as well. You can weave two threads different directions and then when you pull it closed so there's just one there not too sure why that's happening but let me just more or less continue this will be the back of the collar okay so that's been done I will leave the green for now you want to you can stuff the head right now and close the collar but I have uh, found that some of the fibers were getting caught the fluff fibers were getting caught in the wool the, the yarn here and then when I was sewing this closed they were being caught in the back of the uh, of the work and I just don't like that it's up to you it's easier to stuff the head now. Space is bigger. Whereas when you're stuffing from the feet, you're working through a narrower space. One needs to be the generous with the tail lens. I started off using half half arms, but it's not enough. I think I need to really work up to starting with a full arm and ending with a full arm, full arm tail, just so that I have enough to really do what I want to do. Because it becomes tricky if you put a lot of them, if you make a lot of them and they're different colors. And if you run out of yarn, you have to go digging through your supplies and try and find the ball. So, there we go. I've come down to the bottom. I'm going to try and find the knot on each side. There's one knot. The other one is obvious because it's where the tail is. So I'm going to go down and come out that knot. I want to get that knot. It's a bit tricky, but I've gone right through the knot. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to get the knot. I'm going to pull it closed. Come back and this will be closing the the base yeah it's holding for now when I later on I'll give it another tug but I need to stuff through there so I don't want it to be coming 
I don't want all this to be coming un to be coming to unravel. See how short this tail is. Um, yeah, one of my earlier works. I'm now going to get my stuff in. This is from Hobbycraft. It has all the approvals. Because even though I'm sending these to my daughter, one never knows where it's going to end up, and I'd just rather spend a little bit more on buy quality stuffing. So I'm off screen, I don't want it over my desk because the fibers fall out. I'm just literally opening up the stuffing like that so I'm doing it over the carpet and not over my desk because it makes a gazillion little tiny fibers and I'm just pulling and tugging and pulling and tugging just opening it all up sometimes I prepare a whole lot but this is fresh out of the packet so okay Then what I'm going to do is put my packet down. I don't know how much I'll need. I'm just going to go in there. I do have a pencil on hand. I, um, where is it? My pencil with a rubber on the end, a razor, and that also helps, especially if I want to get some of the stuffing right up there. So I'm going to start off with a small piece and keeping the tails out of the way. See, it's tricky because it's much easier if you do it, as I said, before you've sewn it all the way up. But then with the pencil, I'm just moving it into the antenna. There we go. My little heads are kind of overstuffed and the bodies are understuffed. There we go. See how it makes all these little fibers and that's what I don't like when I'm sewing up. These guys get in the way. So I tend to sew up a pile of bodies then I do stuffing of a pile of bodies and so on and so on because each task has different tools so normally I would sew them all up like this put them all aside and then I would do all the stuffing because they have different tools and I'm working in quite a small space here so it's what all happening on one desk Because of the uh, the safety eyes, they, they're sticking out. My finger is now working that stuffing around the safety eyes. This tail's out the way. It's going to be the head is going to need a little bit more so let me prepare some more over my carpet Difficult to know. I just really go by the feel. Now there's a little bit coming out the neck. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close the neck 
there's some stuffing I can feel it's like he's the stuffing is there pulling in both directions Checking the head, giving it a bit of a roll. If you want to, you can anchor the neck now. You can tie a knot if you want, but I'm going to leave that for afterwards. I want to stuff the body first. So there's already some coming through the neck, but that's fine. It's not a problem at all. And this might actually be enough for the body. Getting onto the two sides because the body is going to be flat. If you want to, you can keep them the round body. If it was an owl, for instance, then you would not. You wouldn't put anything in. Then you could overstuff it if it was going to be an owl. <clears throat> but mine's a little alien, so I'm going to put a little bit more in. Because what I do is when I'm sewing up the feet, um, I first sew up the, the seam for the trousers and then I sew the feet closed. Um, if there's a little bit coming out, I just pull that out, put it back into the back. So the neck, I'm happy with the neck, but I want to just anchor it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through. As I'm going to have a collar, it will hide different things. Normally, I would have one of these would be a um, one arm's length, but I don't have that luxury this time because I did not cut that so what I'm gonna have to do is crochet both of these little sections and add the bell if you were not making a collar um, you would just keep on going come out of different places just go back and forth and back and forth and just basically get that neck from all sides and as you can see I didn't pull tight I literally just went to the front and I came back again I'm going to leave those because the collar and the bell are in the next video as I said if you are not adding them then just keep on working that back and forth back and forth and then you can cut those so now your neck is done what I want to now do is the trousers I'm not going to take the short one, I'm going to take the long one. I want to do the trousers, the seam for the trousers. And this is the little trick I learned because it was trial error. I don't not I don't close the feet first because otherwise sometimes you can find that the whole thing is twisted. His feet are at that angle. So it looks like he's basically looking at the side. He'll be ended up, he'll end up like that. And I'm trying to get them as centered as possible. So I take a larger darning needle. You can buy these things in packs with the different sizes. And um, it's really ha handy to have a selection of different size darning needles and chenille needles. Chenille needles have sharp points. So I'm going through the middle of the face there we go and I'm going to follow that line all the way down and into the body so that is now the middle of the little guy so where do I want the trousers about there and then I put them on the side like this and I stick it 
all the way through to the back and I want to come out at my seam a little bit off there's my seam yeah see my seam is so invisible I can't even see him okay I would say that's it could either be that side or that side so I'm gonna go with that just checking that it's a little bit straight okay I'm happy with that so now he he isn't this needle is now my guide get the stuffing in pinch the bottom closed but I'm not starting at the bottom I'm going to work towards the bottom to where the feet are so with my yarn I'm just going to go straight up and I'm going to come out where the trousers are. You are just going to close it slightly. You're not going to pull it otherwise you're going to distort it. You're just basically carrying the yarn up. Loop over. One more. That's where your trousers is going to be. Give it a tug. Is it pulling this yarn? No, it's not, which means it's anchored. Now you're going to go back in there and you're going to come out. So you see it's just underneath the needle. You're going to come out just underneath the needle of this one. And you're going to pull it. You're going to step down a tiny fraction. You're going to come to the front and you're going to come out just underneath where you did your last stitch let me zoom in you're going to come in out right underneath where you did your last stitch and you're not worrying about the stuffing the stuffing will do what the stuffing is going to do as long as you have it more or less spread across the body you're going to go back in there but not the same spot you're going to go a little bit further down and be really careful that you are getting your seam into the same line. Hold it to the side and you come out. The back will always be a little bit different because that's where you worked and so sometimes it can be slightly off. It's really the front that you want to be very precise. Sorry about that. You want to be very precise. You work the collar first you don't have this problem or if you worked away those tails but tuck them in like that at some point we're going to be pulling this go back in and where am I I'm going to come out little bit further underneath so now I've gone back and forth a few times you can keep this as a guide you can just move them up a little bit just so that you can use them as a guide but you need them out of the way for what you're going to do next you're now going to pull and that has created your crotch See the stuffings coming out don't worry about that we will remove it when we get closer to the feet I'm gonna go be going up and down this leg seam a number of times but you want that first row to be precise because when we get to the bottom we are going to close the feet and then we'll come back and we will work that, that trousers those trousers um, the definition of the trousers so now you see I've come all the way down here and I have too much too much stuffing take it out could have maybe done this just beforehand I left it a bit too late
yeah, I left it a little bit too late. Look what a mess I've made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle out and just take my thread out. I left it a little bit too late. See, fair bit came out. I normally work as far down to the feet as that. Um, I was being overzealous in my demonstration. I have to get all this back in. What a royal mess I've made. Yeah, I know my tail's going back in. It's fine. Because what I will do is I'm going to tuck him away. Bring him out there. Okay, tucked him away. Take him off. And I am going to sew up the feet. You want to make sure that you are matching up your back seam with your front seam and then whoops so closed the little feet catching the I'm catching the edge of the cast on it has little loops getting used to this camera stand being in this position so there's a little loop there let me zoom in again I want to get that little loop catch him and pull him in I don't want to overwork the seam of the the feet. It makes it hard. The back seam is tricky because it's made little nodules. I'm trying to get the outside loop. This is my Kind of naughtiness there we're going to try and get him in so let me go and fetch that loop there and tuck it all the way over to fetch that one there and hopefully it will hide it yes it has love my glasses these are magnifying glasses from poundland 2.0s My eyes are such a state that I can't even read a label on a bottle in the supermarket. But with these magnifying glasses, I can see what I'm doing. Two decent lamps from Wilco's. There we go. That's the bottom. Just checking the feet. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm going to keep this tail because you never know, it might come in an emergency. He's very short though. Zoom out. I can take this out. I could take him out earlier. Now what I'm going to do is just move the stuffing around. Because it was a little bit distorted closing off the feet I was moving the stuffing out of the way so you can leave him like that he's really cute or you can put little markers for the arms I am going to go up and down the leg again and then I'll put the markers for the arms when I say marker 
I'm literally just going to put two little dimples. I won't add the beads in. That will be in another video where I'm adding the beads and bells. And it made quite a big jump. See, the back is not as important as the front. The back has a rather tough seam. And so if you come out more or less in the right place in the back, it's fine. But I don't want to damage the front's beautiful line. Go back into that crotch. Just keep on opening the front. So that it comes out at the right place. And there. Yeah, the storm has uh let's see this is gonna be one of the worst storms in 30 years in the UK. Category or warning five, highest level warning. Oh, red. <laughs> I watched a documentary on Hurricane Katrina. They called it a category five, so I got the two mixed up. No, so it's a red warning. It's the highest warning for a storm. Storm Eunice. We had what is his name? Dudley, I think. Storm Dudley. Just before. I'm based in London, so the other one, the other storm was higher up. But the Storm Eunice is going to be hitting Devon and South Wales mostly. Before it rushes over. To London well it's already here so let me see I said this can be quite a pain where do I want my little pleats to be you can use a guide my little dimples I won't put them like that I'll put them higher up almost like little little underarms if you've made a comfort doll and he has trousers, then if you look at the patterns online, they'll show you how to tuck the little hands into the trousers by where you put your arms. It's so cute. Just by using different colors and placing the, the lines in the right place, you can really create the most lovely effects. I haven't pulled it yet. I'm going to go back and forth a few times before I pull it. You can see where it is. I'm trying to go exactly the same spot. See, there he is. Okay, now I give it a little tug. And the beading, I use the same color, but I use a different yarn. Which means that I don't go straight from making a dimple to making a bead. I want them to be separate. So that should the bead come out. I have one bead in the front and one bead in the back. Should the bead come out. Um, it, will not, it will not affect the dimple. That's holding the arm in place. Where is the back dimple? Whoops. Okay, I'm happy with that, especially because I'm going to be adding the beads in as well. I go through the bead, each bead twice, going across to the other side. I'm just more or less guessing where I'm coming out. I'm going to use this as a guide. Let's see, where is he? He's about there. If you want to be fastidious, you can count the rows. Um, as I said, if you're making them, if you're actually making trousers and shirts, then you would follow the colours. It makes it much easier. As to where you're gonna go in and out. But this is fine. I'm gonna go in there. And out. There. If you don't have a large darning needle, you can use a 
knitting needle but it's longer and can get in the way and give it a little tug green yarn is sneaking back into the picture where are you That green yarn just wants to be part of it. So yeah, I do tend to do the necklace, the collar before I do the sewing up of the legs simply because trial and error. Okay, so I've done that a few times. The dimples are nicely in place. One just needs to work away this yarn go back and forth a few times now I would normally use this for working away if it was longer I would use it to work away the um, and work into work the beads in they're large beads let me just show you because you might be curious they have really a really weird bead and I purchased them and I thought I don't like them but they've turned out to be absolutely perfect See where the see where the hole is? It looks like a little teardrop. And they've turned out to be absolutely perfect for this. Because that teardrop section is on the in the front. So one never knows. I've had those beads for years and one never knows when. I had so many beads, I actually counted I had 13 kilograms of beads. So the excess ones are sold on eBay. I've kept about six kilos. I had a ridiculous amount. So this one has been worked away, this tail, coming to the end of the video. But I haven't worked this tail over here away. I left him just in case I needed him, because you never know. It can be that you think, oh, if I just had another few centimeters of yarn. I'm not pulling it tight, I'm just literally going back and forth. Cut. Tug the little body. Yes, he's very cute. So the next video will show how to put the dimples in and the collar with the bell, if that is what you want to do. If not, just work these green ones back and forth, back and forth, and then hide them and snip them off, and your little alien would be finished if he was beadless. And if you haven't put the features in, because it's going to be a comfort doll for a little baby and you haven't got eyes then you can of course <coughs> you can of course add the features i haven't made any aliens that are baby friendly but if i do then i will make a video for that okay then thank you very much for watching and have fun bye for now